Hey there, welcome back to AI Code King. Vercel has been one of the best platforms to deploy your front-end apps to. They make deploying apps pretty easy for people who don't want to set up their own servers and stuff. But Vercel is pretty pricey, to say the least. Their lowest pricing tier costs $1.20, in which you can only deploy a front-end and nothing else. If you want to use a back-end or DB, you'll need to use something like Supabase, DynamoDB, and some AWS Lambda functions, which will obviously increase your cost even more. And even if you pay it, you'll be locked into their ecosystem. And if they increase the prices tomorrow, you won't be able to leave them because of their walled gardens. Plus, even if you keep paying for it, the costs can never be static, because if someday you get a high amount of requests, the Vercel costs are going to scale just as high as the visitors. So, I don't want to keep paying for something that is very high in cost and provides you very low value for the cost. And even if you pay that cost, you're still locked into keeping paying them. In comparison, a digital ocean droplet, which can easily handle a Next.js website, costs only $1.06, which is $1.14 less than Vercel's pricing. Plus, if for some reason you don't want to use DigitalOcean, you can just remove that instance and deploy to a new VPS that you like. You're not locked into a specific provider. Also, you can host your databases and multiple other things for a fraction of the cost as well. And that's why I have covered some Vercel alternatives in the past, like Coolify, Docploy, and they all are really amazing for deploying your applications. Coolify and Docploy are also very easy to set up, but overall, they all are really great. And today, I have another such alternative to cover, and that's Kubero. Kubero is a self-hosted platform as a service. It enables you to deploy applications within a few clicks, which is pretty amazing. It also has a pretty cool web interface. You can create continuous deployment pipelines with it, which means you can easily get the newest version of your application deployed by just pushing the code to your GitHub repo. You also don't need to dockerize your application with it, as it has some inbuilt build packs. So, you can just connect your GitHub repo and get it deployed easily. It also has cron jobs features. So, you can set up cron jobs through their UI as well. You can also deploy some of the common applications like WordPress and Grafana with just one click. You can do this via their pre made templates. You can also deploy your databases with it by just one click, which is pretty cool. For complex applications, you can also deploy Docker containers with it as well. If we look at its underlying technology, then let me tell you that it majorly uses Kubernetes, as implied by its name. If you don't know about Kubernetes, then let me give you a speed run about it. Kubernetes is an open source container orchestration system for automating the deployment, scaling, and management of containerized applications. It was originally designed by Google and is now maintained by the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Kubernetes provides a platform agnostic way to deploy, manage, and scale applications that are packaged in containers, such as Docker containers. To simplify, if you know Docker, you'll know that Docker containers run on a single host machine, which means if the host machine or the container crashes due to some reason, your whole application could go down. Also, Docker containers themselves can't scale, and if your requests start increasing, it may lead to unexpected errors. But that's where Kubernetes comes in. Kubernetes is an orchestrator that keeps all your containers in check, and if it feels that one container has crashed, or the containers can't keep up with the requests, it can scale them up or down. It can also self-heal your containers by replacing containers and multiple such things. So, that's basically how it functions. Now, let's get it set up. 
first, we'll need to install Kubernetes. To install it, come to Kubernetes Installation Guide, and over here, you'll see the commands to execute. Execute these commands one by one, and it will get installed. Now, we'll need to install Kind. To install Kind, come to this page, and under this Installing from Release Binaries section, copy this command and paste it in your terminal. This will get Kind's CLI tool installed. Once done, come to Kubero's GitHub page. Now, scroll down, and you'll see this command. Go ahead and paste it in your terminal, and the Kubero CLI tool will be installed. Now, go ahead and run this Kubero install command. Now, you'll see an interactive shell over here. I'll recommend using the default settings by just hitting enter at each step. You'll also be asked if you want to configure it to automatically create instances for your cloud providers via their API. So, if you want, you can use that as well. Anyway, you'll also be asked for the username and password to set for your web UI. So, make sure you note it down. Then, at the last step, you'll be asked for your domain, or else it will be installed on localhost. Once you have gone through all the steps, you'll see that Kubero is successfully installed. Go ahead and open it up, and you'll see this login screen. Get yourself signed in by entering the credentials you just created, and you'll see this screen. Now, over here, you can create a new pipeline, and over in the left, you have the other menu options as well. The first one is the Templates option, where you'll find some pre-made templates to deploy some common applications easily and within seconds. Next is the Add-ins option, where you'll see the databases options that you can add to your applications. Then, there's the Settings option. Here, you can configure multiple things about your server and deployments. You also have the Pod Sizes option over here, where you can change the size of your Kubernetes pods to be deployed. There is also the Build Packs option, where you can add your own Build Packs over here. Then, there's the Templates and Notifications tab. Now, let's deploy our application. Go to the home page. Then, click on the New Pipeline button. Now, enter your application name and domain name over here. Now, I'll be deploying this GitHub repo. So, I'll enter this URL over here. Now, in the build pack, choose whatever you want to use. In my case, it's a Next.js application, so the Node.js build pack will work. Next, over here, you'll see the environments you can create for your application, like staging, production, and others. I'm only using the production environment here. Now, save it. Once done, you'll see this pipeline on your home page. Now click on it. Now, over here in the production environment, click on this Add button and over here. Now, you'll see a similar page over here as well. Now, enter the app name over here and enter the domain. You can also turn on HTTPS over here as well. Now, over here, Enter the GitHub repo URL. And now, over here, you can also turn on or off the auto-deploy option. Anyway, once that is done, you can set up your environment variables over here. You can also set up your scaling options over here. This will allow you to set up your auto-scaling features and default machine size and type. You can also set up volumes and cron jobs over here as well. Anyway, save it now. Now, you'll see your application over here. You can go ahead and open it and you'll see that it is working fine. Now, if you want to check your application status and logs, then you can click on it, and over here, you can see all the details. Pretty cool. Now, if you want to add a database like MySQL, then you can get it added by going to the Edit option, and over here, click on the Add an option, and over here, Select your database. Once selected, enter the credentials, and your database will be created. So, that's how you can set up your applications with ease, just like Vercel, without any big price tags.
you can go ahead and start using it in seconds, which is pretty cool. You can also configure it to use with multiple servers, which is also cool. Let me know if you'll be using it or not in the comments. Also, if you liked this video, consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below this video. Also, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye.